Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I'm not talking about Dungeons and Dragons. No, instead we're going to make a cheap spell area template or we're actually going to make a number of spell area templates because uh, that's often something that you need at the table when you're laying things over your map trying to figure out whether uh, a spell area is affecting something or not. So what we're going to need for this particular video is we're going to need some cutting knives and some scissors. So I've got some scissors. I've got myself my Stanley um, classic cutting knife just with a heavy blade. Uh, I've also got just a, a large knife just in case and a smaller knife just depending on what I find most useful. I've also got myself a whiteboard marker. It's got a quite a large thick tip. You don't necessarily have to have a thick tip. That's not necessary. Uh, I've also got myself a steel ruler for cutting up against. Um, I've got, these are all transparencies. These are overhead transparency sheets. And I'm going to be using these for making my templates. Now you don't have to use an overhead projector template, um, sorry, an overhead projector uh, transparency sheet. Because they are a bit on the expensive side, it's perfectly fine just to use a piece of cardboard and just cut that out. Underneath is my cutting cutting surface, it's a self-healing cutting, cutting surface, and also something just to give you an idea of how things are laid out, I brought along my Pathfinder flip mat, and that'll give us an idea of sort of the scale of things. So um, I ran around the house, as I don't have a compass um, for drawing circles, I ran out around the house and I, I found a whole lot of items that I could use for marking out my templates. So I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. We're going to start off with the size that we, most people tend to want to what, want to use and that is for the fireball. That is the 20 foot radius or 40 foot diameter uh, templates. We're going to start with that. And I got myself a plate. I found myself a plate and it just happens to sit right at the, the edge of the requirement uh, which is a 20 by 20 radius or a, a 40 foot diameter. So this is the one I'm going to use. And I'm just going to draw around it so you can see just quickly. And I'm using a whiteboard marker, not a permanent marker, so I should be able to get rid of the marks on my plates so they're not permanently marked. So as you can see, it's pretty much, it's not exact, but it's pretty close to what I need. So I'm going to get rid of this, and we're going to start off making our first template. A piece of plastic, and gosh, I really do hope it's just the right size. If it's, yep, it's not going to, there's no overhang um, on the plate, so that means all I've got to do is just find a location and just draw around it. Very, very simple. Round we go. I'm not going to be using a Stanley knife to cut this out. I'm just going to be using scissors because that seems like a much more sensible thing to do. There we go. Done. That was easy. And I will shuffle that out of the way and then we just grab our scissors. You can see the mark and try not to rub it off as you're cutting. I'm going to cut off where the... Now the, the edge of the map I don't know if you can tell from uh, this Chessex. So it's it's going to be just a fractionally larger because of the the line that I've drawn. But I feel like that's probably going to be fine. Uh, you can cut on the inside or the outside of the line. I'm going to cut it on the outside of the line uh, simply because it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect and exact. And I have this thing, you know, when you uh, do anything, you, you leave the line. It's, it's one of the things I picked up when I was uh, teaching carpentry. When you do anything, you must leave the line. So we just carefully follow the line. Round we go. Now, will I be making a template for anything other than just this fireball? Uh, well, yes, I am. We're going to do a template for... Uh, 20 foot and we're also going to do a 15 and a 10 and I think I might even have a 5 
and storage is going to be easy because they're nice and flat so easy to actually put away if you need to not going to be a problem and just follow the right line around make sure you have a cloth with you because you want to get rid of the, the marks once you've finished cutting it out it's a little bit hard to make out my, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be so I think I'm doing alright so far and marking let's try to go a little bit faster right now you can make these out of uh, a much thicker material if you wanted to if you didn't want to use overhead projector um, transparencies because they're hard to find or difficult to get and you want to use cardboard that's fine but also to those um, it's an envelope to like a, a a clear plastic envelope I use them a lot you could use the material from that because it's a much more durable plastic it's not quite as see-through so it won't be as the reason for doing it with the transparency is so you can see through the actual um, template and figure out exactly where to lay your fireball or whatever the spell effect is so get rid of that and once I've done that let's grab uh, a cloth and it doesn't need to be wet should just wipe off the black mark like so easy peasies and we now have a template for our fireball which we can lay over I don't know that you can necessarily see it very well but I would suggest grabbing a permanent marker a black permanent marker and just labeling it so you don't get confused with all the rest of them and I did actually, I do think I have a permanent marker around somewhere. There we go, I do have a permanent marker. So we're going to put here, um, all right, 20 foot radius. 20 foot. And radius. Okay. If you are sure that somebody is going to get confused, you could always just write down 40 foot diameter and that'll still cover your template. So we'll get rid of this template and we'll move on to the next one. So I'm going to just wipe out the marks that I made on this so we can see the next one that I have uh, ready to go. Uh, are we going to be making a cone? Yes, we certainly are. We don't need to really worry about making um, a cube. I think you'll find cubes are going to be unnecessary because it's pretty easy if you're using a grid to figure out where to lay it um, but something else other than a cube might be helpful right here we go so that there is pretty close to the size I want which is why I selected it <clears throat> it's a good thing I've checked all of the bowls in the kitchen and just draw around Oh, I think I just used the permanent marker. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Um, I'm going to put that permanent marker away for now. Is that a disaster? Actually, it's not. This is because the Pathfinder map is just vastly better. And I'll explain in a second why. Okay, so as you can see, it is actually slightly larger than I need it to be. So I will definitely be cutting on the inside when I do my marks. And as you can see permanent marker oh that's a problem uh, actually it's not a problem I've got a, a whiteboard marker here and I should be able to just go over that mark and I'll show you right now like so <laughs> so it might take me a little while but I can actually remove all the marks from this this mat I've done a video on this particular topic before I won't do that right now but you can see roughly once you put it on a grid where it's going to lay and um, we're going to get rid of this and we're going to mark out the 30 foot so I've got another uh, piece of plastic and where is my bowl here's my bowl put it as close to the edge as possible and whiteboard marker <laughs> and I'll just draw around piece of cake if you need to draw around more than once, then by all means do that.
for anybody who is wondering when I'm going to be returning to the purple worm um, I will be returning to the purple worm pretty shortly probably not today I'm just going to let it dry a little bit more and uh, then it'll be ready to go a lot of the painting videos that I've been doing too um, not really practical at this time of the year because of the humidity it's just so hot and there's so much water in the in the air that if I try to do any painting it just doesn't dry so they'll, they'll happen probably once winter or should I say um, autumn starts to set in so on the inside of the line because I when I marked it out it was a little bit bigger than I really wanted it to be and we just cut around very very simple if you've got any questions you're welcome to chuck them into the comments and I will certainly answer those questions if you have questions unrelated to uh, this particular video uh, topic um, I'm if you hang around I'll answer those questions near the end and this video shouldn't take very long I should be able to get through it reasonably quickly For those of you who've just jumped in, we are cutting template. This is the 15 foot radius or 30 foot diameter template, and we're using overhead transparency sheets. I actually made a whole bunch of these from clear plastic a while back, and then I lost them. I don't know how I managed to do that. I suspect because they are see through and you can't actually easily spot them unless you've got them in a packet of something um, and I didn't I didn't actually write on them uh, with permanent marker what they were I just had them just freely floating around so chances are somebody spotted them thought they were rubbish and thrown them away or I've thrown them away and I didn't realize <laughs> so yeah cutting around try to keep to the line and we're almost done there go just trim 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 I think I got that pretty much right we'll just move this piece of plastic out of the way and as I said before if there's any leftover marks or lines on it just get your cloth it's a whiteboard marker and you just go over it and uh, rub it all out and now I've got to make sure that when I grab this permanent marker and and put 15 foot radius that uh, I don't use it again for the next stage. So I'll put 15 foot radius. There aren't too many spell effects that we use a 15 foot radius, but if you do need one, you do have one now, and we'll get rid of that one. Okay, hopefully I've got enough sheets so I can do the cone as well, because I'm going to need to do probably a 15 foot and a 30 foot cone. I should be able to get that out of, out of this material. Right, so the next one, uh, we're gonna be going for, oh, I forgot about it, let's get my mat. I'll deal with this later on, we'll flip that over. So we're gonna go with the 10 foot radius, and I found this particular, what is this, Slim's, some sort of protein powder. Um, so I'm going to draw around this. This should give me the right size that I want. Use the whiteboard marker and just check its size. Just like so. And then we have a quick look at it. Okay, so it looks pretty good. Um, I would say that's almost exactly, so I'm going to stick with keeping to the outside line on this one. So we can move that out of the way. And I will grab our piece of plastic. I don't know that I can fit it on an existing piece. Can I squeeze it onto this piece? That's the... Oh yeah, I can reuse that. We'll use this piece instead. Then I don't have to uh, waste it. Uh, there, I got um, actually got my mum to let me have a few of these. Right, and then just draw around. Come on, you mark. It's not marking very well. I 
Um, honestly, I haven't seen too many that you can buy. Uh, it's not a product uh, template for spells that I've seen. I saw somebody try to do a, uh, was it a Kickstarter? And I don't know if the Kickstarter was successful. I would imagine it would be quite expensive. I think that making your own is more likely the most sensible thing you can do. That is just not quite as rough, or should I say, it's not as dark as I'd wanted. I might use the permanent marker, uh, since that's just not showing up. And then I'm cutting all around the, uh, the inside of the line, so that all the marks should be disappearing anyway. And if I can't get it off, then I will use uh, another technique to get it uh, clear, clear it off. Right, let's just go around. Mark my line. And there. Okay, cool. That's done. That's another one done. And I will obviously have to clean the permanent marker off the top of the lid sometime. Uh, okay, what do you got here, Char Charlie? Uh, and do you have any work around if you don't have an item that matches the desired size of the template? Okay, well that's a good point. So what do you do if you don't have an item that's the desired size? I think you will be able to just look around your house and you will find something eventually. Otherwise, you're going to have to go and get yourself a compass so that you can actually draw it out to the size that you want. Which means putting a slight hole in the center of it, as you would with any compass, and then just marking out the distance you want and then drawing a circle. Um, you can also make your own homemade compass with a, a string and a just make sure that you've got a string and like a, a center point, like a nail or a pin. And then you put your marker, pencil or whatever it is on the outside and away you go. You can do the same thing with a, a piece of wood. It's probably the most accurate way if you're going to make a homemade uh, compass is to use a piece of wood rather than string. Both methods can work. you just got to be very careful. And I'm probably not going to be doing that with a homemade compass simply because although it can work, uh, sometimes it can be a bit messy. Certainly it wouldn't be very easy to do it as a live stream video. That's my opinion anyway. Alright. So we're almost there. Good thing that this uh, needed to have the the inside cut off, just to the sheer size. I certainly hope it was the inside. Did I say the inside or the outside? Well, yeah, yeah. I feel like maybe I should have cut. You know, I was supposed to leave the outside off on. See that? That wasn't thinking. It's alright, I'll have to make another one. And will it rub off? Actually, even though that's permanent marker, I feel like that will actually come off with a bit of rubbing. Even with no alcohol or any product, the plastic's pretty good at, at the marks coming off. Look, look at this. It's not coming off super fast, but you can see, you give it a good rub, probably with a bit of soap, you'll be able to get it off. It wouldn't be a problem. All right, take that, put that over the side, and uh, where was I? I think I will remake that one. I don't feel like that worked out as well as I'd hoped. All right, let's stitch that piece of plastic. Let's grab another one. Uh, I think I've got some spare plastic I left over from the last one, which is this one. Is that big enough? No. Right, so a new piece of plastic, and I'll use the leftovers for the smaller radiuses. Okay. Right, so I've got to mark it again. This time, make sure I use the outside, and it will have to be the wet erase, because I don't, I, 
I don't have the patience for hanging around waiting for uh, my pen to ah, come on why is that pen just not doing its job uh, I'm gonna have to use the permanent marker well at least we know got to use a permanent marker I do have some products that will take off permanent marker but The whiteboard marker was working fine before. All right, here we go. Let's cut this out. Uh, what's that, Charlie? Thanks for the video. We'll likely be making some in the near future and we'll be watching the rest in the morning. I'll go get some sleep, Charlie. Totally understand. I know uh, wherever you are, it's not necessarily the same time as me, so absolutely. And I'll cut out. If I'm uh, not far enough into the screen, you let me go know, guys, because I, I can shift myself around a little bit. It's not, not an issue. So we're cutting on the outside. Keep cutting. Trim, trim, trim. And I mean, honestly, even if you couldn't get the permanent marker off, I don't think it would be an issue. You know, if the, the permanent marker stays on there, even even if you can't rub it off, it doesn't matter because at least you can see the outside line. <laughs> it might actually be quite hard to see where the actual plastic can finishes and starts if it's uh, really completely see-through. Really up to you. All right, trimming around. Almost done. And come on, finish it off. Yep, got it. Okay, all right, let's get that piece of plastic out of the way. So there's our template, uh, which is going to be the right size this time rather than the one that I got, which was the wrong size. So let's rub this off. Cool, that's good. And I still want to rub off this stuff. Um, I feel like it would take me too long to do it in this video, but I suppose I should actually show you what material, what uh, compounds will actually take it off. See, it's, it's set hard now. Got some cleaning product. If I got some cleaning product close by, that's the problem. Yep. Okay, so let's have a go using some of this. Like everything I do, I should have done a, a test um, test of all of this beforehand. This is whiteboard cleaner and restorer. So I'm going to give it a go with some of that and see if that will take it off. Okay, well that cleaned it off. Good, cool. And we'll just spray my mat because it looks like it's got a little bit of black residue on it now. There we go, let's clean that up. So what is this? This is, what's the compound in it? So that you guys know, so you can get your, um, your marker off. Isopropyl alcohol. So isopropyl alcohol will get your permanent marker off this plastic. Okay, so now that we've got the template the right size, we're going to mark it. Uh, as I said before, I've been marking it in terms of radius, but you can mark it as the diameter if you prefer. It's really up to you. So this one is a, a 10 foot rad radius rather than uh, any, a 20 foot or a 15. So 10 foot, 10 foot radius and we can just lay it over wherever we need to I'll get that out of the way and we'll move on to the next one this is the last of the circles 
So if I place that on there and mark around that, not with the permanent marker, otherwise I'm going to create more work for myself later on. And just draw around. This is a rice syrup container that I'm using. Okay, I don't know if you can necessarily make out the lines on that because my whiteboard marker is doing all sorts of weird things with me. But that's pretty much um, the right size. I'd say it might be fractionally larger than required. So we could probably cut on the inside. So I'll give it a go cutting on the inside. And because I cut this one the wrong size, I'm going to use this again. So we'll get, get rid of that. I'll grab my container. And because I'm not getting uh, much joy from the whiteboard marker, right? This is a, essentially a brand new whiteboard marker, so I don't know why it's giving me trouble. So I'll grab the permanent marker, mark around. There we go, done. Put that off to the side, grab our scissors. And I said before when we were lining it up on the mat that uh, it looked like I could probably cut on the inside. So I'm gonna cut on the inside. Be less of the line to remove, which will be good because I'm cutting it away. And we just trim it off. I know I've got um, a friend who made a whole lot of templates out of that reinforced cardboard. So uh, we still use those, those are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. There we go. I'm kind of following the lot wrong line right now. So there we go, back on track. And almost there. Trim, trim, trim. This is the last of the circular templates that you might require in your game. And honestly, don't go and buy templates. Go just make your own. No further. How long have I been at it? This this has been 30 minutes and we've done almost all of the circles. And uh, you've managed to see uh, all the errors that I could possibly make so that you don't make them. So yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't do it. And let's rub that off. Any leftover ink. There we go. And I'll just spray my mat again. And wipe. Piece of cake, that was easy. So it's a little bit hard to see, I realise, but I'm going to write on it with the permanent marker in a second anyway. So you'll be able to tell where, tell where it is. This is going to be a 5 foot radius, rather than a 10 foot, or a 15, or a 20. Uh, any uh, diameter that's larger than this, it's really not practical as a template. So if you're dealing with really large areas, making a template is not going to make any sense whatsoever. So, so 5 foot. Right small thread, right small five foot radius. Okay. Okay, cool. That's all done. So that is the five foot radius, which is drying. We've got a 10 foot radius that we've made. We've got a 15 foot radius, which is gonna squeeze in about here, I guess. Just, just out of the way. And and then we've got the big 20, uh, which is, there's no space for, because it's so large. Okay, so there is all of your main uh, spell area effects that you might require uh, for this part of the video. We're gonna do the cones as well, and 
then we're going to just wrap it up there. Done. Done zoed. All right. Come on, you. Let's move you out of the way. My fingers are a little bit um, tacky right now. Okay. All right. So next, let's deal with our our cone. And I'm only going to make up two cones. Mainly because really there's only ma two main cones that you might use when you're casting a spell and that is the 15 foot and the 10 foot. And if I were to just draw them up just really quickly without doing anything major, uh, it's just not coming off. Why am I not able to get my... That's very that's frustrating as. It's like it's running out this very, very second and it was working fine before. So that would be the 15 foot um, cone. And uh, I'm going to use the permit marker obviously because this whiteboard marker is not getting me anywhere. And I've got no replacements right now unfortunately. So how are we going to do this? Look, you can do it straight off the grid if you want, or you can get more technical and you can measure everything up with a ruler, which is why we've got the ruler. Uh, so we're going to do that, and then uh, once we've marked it out, we'll be ready to go. Now I've got a ruler that's uh, got uh, metric and imperial, and uh, 15 foot would be 3 inches, and uh, the top of the triangle is going to be 1.5 inches. So we'll just mark out a square and find the center on one, one side of the uh, square and then we'll create our triangle. So clear piece of sheet, permanent marker because uh, nothing else seems to be working today. <laughs> and we're going to mark right there. Pull that off. Oh, did I get marker on my nose. I might have. Okay, so it's a big thick marker. I feel like that's not going to be very practical. I did have a, a finer inked marker floating around, but uh, for the sake of you know, apparently it's nowhere to be seen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember I've marked it. I'm going to cut the line off so I don't have to remove it with uh, any alcohol. So I'm marking it on the outside. I'm going to do the same thing again over here, or oh, actually a bit further over here. On the outside, there's my mark. Draw a line. I know that looks strange. I suppose if I just use it, I should use the lines on the mat, mat right, because that's supposed to help me position things. Okay, and line it up and draw across. Okay, good, got that. And then make another mark at the other side. I know you can't necessarily see exactly uh, where the plastic is. I know that's it's a, it's like literally invisible on the camera. I suspect, but trust me, it is in the right place. Okay, that's good. It's three inches, and we'll do the same thing again. Right. Ah. Oh. Right there. Three inches, and mark the edge of the roller, and we just link that up. Each line's not quite the same thickness now. Eek. It'll be the be there, won't it? Roughly. Alright, there. And draw through. Okay. Alright, so we've got a square. Now we just find the center and mark that. And our our mark needs to be taking into consideration the thickness of our marker, so whatever marker you use is going to have the same problem. 
So right smack in the center, right there. So that's our center, and then we just draw some lines to the corners. Just one. And two. Done. Okay. Well, it's up to you whether you want to cut the, the black lines off, but like I said, you can just clean them off. Now, at this point, you could use just your scissors and just cut it out if you're not too worried about it being absolutely perfect. I'm going to use a, a cutting knife because it's a straight line, so it makes sense to me. So, and that's why we've also got the steel ruler. And marking and cutting. I am going to keep my pen line. Pen line that looks like it's pretty accurate, so. Just a fraction. Okay. That's that side done, and the other side. Okay, one cone, whoops, sorry about that, move the plates out of the way. So there's our cone, and it should match up on our, our grid, let's just check it. Okay, it looks pretty close, looks like there's a little bit more of a point here, but I think that's good enough. So what I'll do is I'm just going to wipe off this. And I'll get rid of the marks off the outside edge, which of course it's going to need alcohol. Alright, isopropyl alcohol, come back here. Uh, little bits of uh, plastic everywhere, hang on. Good. And then just clean it off. So, do the same thing on the other side. Why did the corner not come up, coming clean off? Is it on the other side? Oh, that's in the back, that's why. <laughs> Alright, now I know. Got it. And just cleaning my surface off again. There we go. Done. Right, so we have our cone, which I know you can't see. So I'm just going to let it drip to dry before I label it. Um, it might show up more if I put it on the paper over here. Uh, you might get a bit more definition. Um, we're going to do the 30 foot and then we are done. Done and dusted. Last of the uh, templates. Alright. So, pen. So we're, we're aiming for a 30 foot. So 30 foot is 6 squares. So if I just draw it quickly. There's 2 squares four squares, six squares, which means it's pretty easy to find our center. And we just go two, four, six, which will be here, which means that roughly we're looking at a template of about that size.
I don't know if you can necessarily see that. I know that my lines, my my mark is not showing up very well. Let's see if I can get a better line on there. No, it just doesn't want to do it. Sorry about that. Okay, at least I've got something to gauge it with. I think you can only just make out the outline. Anyway, let's uh, let's get started and do our grid. Now the problem is with a piece of plastic that I had, I can't use this one because it's just not going to be big enough. I might be able to get it uh, from this this edge, um, marking it out, doing my lines and so forth. But as I said, when we were doing this, we were creating a square, and it's going to be a real hassle if. If I can't like stick it in the corner like like so um, so I'm gonna grab a fresh piece of plastic and we'll start again so it's taken us I think it's taken us roughly what I would say it's gonna be about four pieces of plastic to get your templates done I think that would be about right okay this should be this should be mostly dry now Okay, so I'm going to write on it now before I forget, and only because it's should I should be able to write on it. Here we go. So this is 15 foot. Writing small, 15 foot cone. Here we go. Done. And it should hopefully show up fairly well. Okay, same thing before, marking out a square and we'll create the last template for this video. So 30 foot is going to be, well 15 was 3 inches, so it's going to be 6 inches by 6 inches our square. And, ah, oh, come on, stay put. Here we go. Like so, hold in place, marker on the outside so that um, we don't make any errors, like so, and then again, further down, oh, it's very, very hard to see the plastic. Even for me, and I'm, I'm right here. I know it must be even harder for you if you're watching the video. And right there, make a line. And it's going to be long enough that it can get, yep, that's good, that's fine. So now we need to mark over here six inches on each side and get the other side drawn. Okay, I'm going to mark there. I think you can see it, hopefully. Last one. Bring it on just a little bit, otherwise I can't see where to mark. Okay, there. Six inches. Mark across, meet them up. Sorry, I'm just trying to be really careful. That's why I'm getting quiet and being careful and uh, repositioning things okay right so we've got a square and now we're going to find the center just like we did before to create our triangle for our cone and uh, let's do it from this side I think and I've got a mark and remember that the pen line doesn't count so on the other side would be smarter 
pen line doesn't count and then mark it yeah. and the middle is three inches okay cool complete the triangle One, oh, sticking to my cutting board, and okay, so I feel like I need to go on the other side. Sorry, guys, I just realised what I was doing before. Alright, cool, there it is, nice and simple, grab myself a cutting blade, I'm going to use the heavy blade rather than the lighter blade, so I just feel like it's easier to cut with a heavy blade than a lighter blade, and I'm going to be leaving the pen marks, uh, that's mostly because um, they seem to be in the right place, <laughs> I took them right to the corner, so yeah, which means I'm going to have to remove the, the marks at some point, but um, that's all right. We figured out how to do that, even with a permanent marker, and then score lightly, and then do it again. Cut through, hopefully it's cut all the way through so I don't have to recut it. Good, that's done. Flip it around, do the same thing again. I like the fact that they've put um, lines on the cutting mat. It does actually, I feel like that helps. Although it could be just psychological. Psychological edge and nothing else. And I'm just going to flip my ruler around because I can't tell between the pen line on the ruler and the pen line on the on the actual plastic so I better see it better this way. There we go. Score lightly and then cut all the way through. And it's done. Okay. Ditch that piece of plastic. We don't need the ruler anymore. We are going to clean off the mess that I've left on there. Shouldn't be too hard to do. Or do I need to grab some more alcohol for it? No, it's coming off. Give me a sec. I'll just rub real hard. Uh, yeah. There we go. Down the other side. No. All right, it's time to use some more. Unfortunately, gonna have to use some more. Spray it on and apply. It came off a lot faster. Okay, all right, that's all cleaned off. Let's do my mat. Now you don't need to clean off the mat every single time, but I'm, I'm a little bit worried the, the marker that I'm using will come off into the plastic and I'll wind up having to clean off the, the plastic more often. Okay, so there's our last one, which I'm going to label in a second um, 30 foot cone, but I need to make sure it's completely dry. So just give me a second while I rub it up against something that's dry. Back of my chair, there we go. You can't see anything, but it's definitely happening. All right, and I'm going to write on here, 30 foot cone, why is that still got black marker on it? Just 
Because it does. Come off, come off. Yep, it's off, finally. I thought I got it off the first time. Okay. Permanent marker. And then, 30 foot cone. Okay, cool. That's all done. I've kind of shuffled things around a little bit, so everything's a little bit higgledy pickled here. I apologise for that. I will uh, just check it on my grid before we move on. Make sure it looks like it's line, it'll line up with everything. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks good. That worked out fine. Nice. Great. Okay, alright, so all of the templates that we made today, we made two cones and uh, we also made a, um, I'll use this so you can see it, the contrast seems to work better on the on the actual Pathfinder mat rather than my, my cutting board. So let's use that instead. So the, the cone and the 15 foot cone and the 30 foot cone. And then we made a whole bunch of uh, spheres or circles to represent spells that might have some sort of radius or diameter to them. And I will lay them out so you can see those as well. So we'll shuffle them over to the side and this is the 5 foot radius one. We've got the 10 foot radius which is over here like so and of course as long as about part of the miniature is covered by the template then then they're supposed to be affected in the area but there's a, a few differing uh, rules with regard to the use of templates in the game of Dungeons and Dragons one is you have to cover half of the miniature space and then I noticed in the Xanathar's Guide to Everything they've also got another rule that says that you need to have just part of the miniature covered by the template. So my suggestion to you is talk to the people at the table and decide what you want to go with and just work with whatever you've decided is the best choice for your table. So whether it's going to cover part of the miniature, the template, or half of the miniature, you make that decision, figure it out, and then just stick with it. Okay, so those are the small ones. I also have the larger ones as well, which will just shuffle to the side. Make a big pile of them. We did a 15 foot radius. And the big the big one, the one that uh, is probably going to get the most use is the, the 20 foot radius. So I'm going to just move that 15 foot out of the way and we'll put the 20 foot radius out. And you can see it is going to do its job pretty well. Now, if you are worried about it being too big, you know, you can just remark it or just re recut it down to the size that you feel is correct. Um, I know you can't necessarily see the outline on the mat, uh, on the, on the mat itself because they are clear, which is why it's probably, you know, if you, if you want a clear one, that's great and you don't mind spending a bit of money, but if you don't mind just doing it out of cardboard, then do them out of cardboard. Now, if you found this video helpful or informative, please share and like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, if you like this sort of thing. I have a whole bunch of videos on all sorts of topics for players and dungeon masters, crafting videos, advice videos, how to play. My whole channel is revolves around how to play Dungeons and Dragons for dungeon masters and players. If you have any questions, you can ask them now in the chat for the live stream. If you aren't part of the live stream and you have a question later on, by all means put a question in the comments section and I'll answer those questions. Guaranteed I will answer questions, I always do. The only time I, I tend to miss a question is when YouTube does something funny and I'm not notified or it sort of gets hidden from me. I don't know, sometimes that seems to happen, I don't know why. If you want to support my channel, watching more of my videos is a, a great way of supporting my channel. I get a little bit of ad revenue from YouTube or AdSense, uh, but if you really want to support my channel, then purchasing 
uh, anything online. If you are a person who purchases from online stores like Amazon, um, I have an affiliate link in the description. You can go through there. You don't even have to buy the thing that it's linked to. You can click on that link, buy something else unrelated to Dungeons & Dragons. I still get a commission and you pay exactly the same price. And till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Where's the 20 on the dice? There it is, right there. Yeah, so keep rolling those 20s. Okay guys, that's it for me. Um, I know this is a slightly different video to what I normally do. Uh, if you guys have got any questions, either related to the Dungeons & Dragons templates that we've just made today, um, of course you can't see them completely because they are see-through, they are transparent. Uh, you can make them out of cardboard. If you have questions related to spells or playing the game or something else that I can answer, I'm really quite happy to hang around for a little bit longer, uh, at least maybe, I don't know, five more minutes or so. If there's no questions, then there's no point in me hanging around and you guys can go off and watch something else or go and do something else. Maybe go to sleep if you're up late. just grabbing myself a, a drink of water. So I don't see any questions coming through the live chat and um, the one person who did ask questions has uh, gone off to bed. So and yeah, unless you have any questions we are going to call it quits in a few minutes. I, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, it's not really something that's super hard to do uh, and why would you go and buy your own templates for playing the game and laying out spell effects when you can simply go and make them yourself? And all I did, I didn't have a compass, I just picked things around the house that are roughly the right size on my grid. I drew around them with a pen, I cut them out with some scissors and a, crumb and a knife and used a, a ruler and a cutting board and it's all done. They're all ready to go. I just need to have something to stack and store them in. And I'm probably going to get myself one of those clear plastic see-through envelopes to store them in this time so I don't wind up losing them. It's pretty easy if they're not put in something that they would sort of disappear on you. Now if this is sort of video content that people find really unhelpful and it wasn't sort of something you were hoping for, uh, then let me know too because if I'm doing stuff that people won't watch and they're not finding useful Then why would I do it? It simply wouldn't make any sense. I Wanted to do this video uh, Simply because I'd seen one of my friends make their own templates and I had made my own templates out of plastic a while ago I'd lost them and I thought well, I should redo it I just need to get some plastic at some point and then I thought, well, while I'm doing it, I might as well show somebody else what I'm doing. It made sense to me. Oggy Oga, yeah. Yeah, I'm about to wrap it up. And, uh, but, you know, it'll, it's going to go public fairly quickly. So you will be able to see it. Uh, unless you've got any questions, I'm about to leave. If you, if you don't have any questions, then, then uh, I will, I'll take off. But, uh, yeah, I'll give you a... I don't know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, have you got a question you want to post up? That's usually about how long it takes for everything to sort of feed through to me. Otherwise, you can just watch the replay once it's up and, uh, and available, which it should be, I think an hour uh, live stream usually takes YouTube approximately just under an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to process properly, and then it becomes available for other people to watch. Okay, alright, well, we're done. I'll see you later. You have a great day too.